You're listening to Jenna Queries on 100.5 FM, CFRO, Vancouver's Cooperative Radio. And joining us now are Kaylee and Margo from the Surrey Dyke March. Go ahead and introduce yourselves and let us know what's going on this year. Thanks for having us. I'm Kaylee. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm one of the organizers of the Surrey Dyke March. Uh, I'm joining today from so-called Surrey, um, which is the traditional unceded territories of the Katsi, Kwantlen, Kwikwetlam, Semiamu, Tawasan, and Kikat First Nations. Um, super excited to talk about this march. It's our second ever. Um, so yeah, thanks for having us. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm non-binary and I use they, them pronouns. And I am another organizer of the Surrey Tech March. So yeah, it's the second year. How did the first year go? Our first year was incredibly wonderful. It is so lovely to look back on and think about how engaged the community got, the support we received from like community members and groups, the organizers that came together and made this happen, wonderful elders who attended. It was just really lovely to see. We had a small first start. I think we were about like 20 to 30 people total that showed up, but like still took to the street, still had an amazing time creating space in Surrey. So yeah. I found the first March so exciting because we just kind of hit the ground running, not really knowing what we got into, but we were like, we have the energy, we're here to go, Surrey needs this, this is something that has been massively missing from the community, and I think that it's just going to get better here on out. Yeah, you mentioned that, you know, the community needs this, and I know a lot of people, rents have kind of forced us out to move out to Surrey. And why is this needed? I think there's a number of reasons. One is that for such a large city um, that's soon going to have a larger population than Vancouver even, that is also geographically larger than Vancouver, there is a strong conservative uh, mindset in a lot of the community here um, or in a lot of the population here. And that has translated into a longstanding history of political uh, municipal politicians, some of which who have refused to fly the pride flag. I think this year is the first every year our city will fly the pride flag, which is it's 2023 in a 600,000 yeah. person city. Our previous mayor tried to get books with queer and trans content banned from uh, Surrey schools. So... It feels especially important when we see so many attacks on our community in the U.S., around the world, and here at home. I'm thinking particularly of the protests that are happening every two weeks against Soji, that it feels that much more important to be visible and grounded in like this grassroots organizing effort for our community. Yeah, you mentioned a book ban, and people don't know that costs like millions of dollars for the school district to fight. Like they actually uh, took it to Supreme Court and dragged it on for years and years and years. And it wasn't like, oh, we're just doing this as a thing. No, we're actually committed to spending loads of money. And I know there's been uh, some protests in uh, Surrey, uh, kind of like every two weeks or so. It's all the convoy folks who have now gone super homophobic. Well, gone super homophobic (laughs) is maybe a misnomer. But uh, can you tell us about that? Yeah. So unfortunately, right wing folks in an attempt to successfully and unsuccessfully perpetuate violence against our community have been inciting a lot of hate through just misinformation, just straight up misinformation. So what I've noticed at these protests every two weeks is there are people with signs that they're against pornography in schools against (laughs) all these things that aren't happening in schools, very obviously not happening, but like it creates, I think this immense fear in people who don't know otherwise, or maybe like don't want to know otherwise. And so um, if there's already kind of a, um, a hatred or a lack of knowledge about our community, then this is like a strategy the right wing can use to turn people against us. And it's really scary and disheartening to be having it so often uh, in our community. So yeah, that's kind of, um, and the the organizers of these protests are the Freedom Party of British Columbia, which has a hilariously small following. Um, <laughs> yes. And they're very 
<laughs> um, I, I would use, I, I don't use the term crybabies that often, but I would say like these are temper tantrum having crybabies. The leader wants everyone to be armed and, you know, hates trans people and all these sorts of like horrific things that, um, yeah, are scary to see. Like, even if it's minimal, there's still a following. So, yeah. Yeah. And it seems like they're the same people who do the North Fan one every Thursday or every second Thursday, whatever. You know, they just travel around and do their own thing in different cities. And we have to put up with it, which is unfortunate. Yeah. So how can people find out more about the Surrey Dyke Merch? As a person who does the socials for Surrey Dyke Merch, I'm going to have to remember all of our social tags. We have a website that has all of the information that surreydykemarch.card.co and then our twitter is dyke surrey and then our instagram is just surrey dyke march i feel like the instagram is popping quality stuff our stories are iconic legendary follow them watch them it's great i think that's all of the information kaylee get me if i'm incorrect <laughs> Um, I mean, the other thing you didn't mention is Facebook, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know who's following Facebook for, you know, or Twitter. Facebook, yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> we are, um, yeah, just groundbreaking, really. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, surreydykemarch.card.co and that's C-A-R-R-D.co, right? You got it. Thank you. Yeah. So if people want to help out, how can they help the Surrey Dyke March? We have a GoFundMe that you can find on our website, and I believe we have posts on our Twitter and Instagram if you want to scroll back a little bit. And we talk about what all of the funds go to is just running the march, um, making sure that things are accessible, and making sure that we have land acknowledgements and a ASL sign, um, anything else that I'm missing, harm reduction, I believe, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, harm reduction, um, snacks and water, etc. on site, transportation of elders, accessible transportation uh, for folks who aren't able to march either, you know, part or the, the full route. But I think, yeah, you covered pretty much all of it, Margo. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. And are you looking for help running the event? Um, yeah, I can talk about that. Short answer, yes, <laughs> please. Um, <laughs> we are a small, passionate team, which is lovely especially with wanting to grow our visibility and our presence for the march. We are really excited to like welcome folks who might want to help out with us. And that's like whatever's within capacity. So that can be something just like day of stuff with transporting goods or helping us set up things or making signs that can be organizing ideas. We'd really Love to like reach more folks in Surrey who might want to join organizing because I've found that like it can be difficult for folks to know about community stuff happening in Surrey or there might be an assumption that it's not happening because there is so little for us here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for hosting us so we can tell people <laughs> about it. I think also something to note is that I think a lot of folks in Surrey don't feel like there's like people of color don't feel like there's a space that's welcoming for them. So Kaylee, if you want to talk about, I guess, the honorarium that we give folks who are people of color to participate so we're not just tokenizing them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, that is another thing that our fundraising goes to is to providing honoraria for our QT BIPOC organizers. This is something we started out the beginning of our first year, uh, was just recognizing that queer spaces historically and currently are not uh, often welcoming to our BIPOC community. And that's a significant problem. So we were thinking about how to create more safety. We can't, I mean, there's no such thing as a safe space, but to create a safer space for folks where they're valued and their opinion matters and they're not just like a token or a number to like show up. So we do provide an honorarium for all QT BIPOC organizers. We also provide gifts to folks um, like elders who attend um, in that capacity. We want to make sure that we are honoring like the lands that we're on, as well as the history of, of pride and community organizing, which is very much grounded. And thanks to Black trans women sex workers. So we really want to like honor our history as we move forward. Yeah, right on. So how can people follow you? 
So we have our website, surreydykemarch.card.co, C-A-R-R-D.co. We have our Twitter, which is at Dyke Surrey. We have our Instagram, which is at Surrey Dyke March. And for those on Facebook, I'm one of them. <laughs> we are Surrey Dyke March uh, at Facebook as well. Yeah. Oh, and uh, is there a save the date? Uh, when's it going to be happening? We're excited to have a date, August 19th, 2023 at 1 p.m. We're slowly working on getting graphics together with some wonderful artists that are involved in organizing. So we're hoping to have more visuals around date, time, route, things like that coming soon to folks. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much.